Perhaps one of the very few things that the public knows about steam trains is that a steam locomotive is obviously fired by coal and there's a guy with a shovel who shovels that coal from the tender into the firebox. Well, that's not always true. Many locomotives also burned wood and many locomotives burned oil. But I've always been curious, just how much coal do those coal burning locomotives actually use? What's up guys, this is Heiss. I've been a fireman and an engineer for almost 10 years now working on coal burning steam locomotives. And I've gotten to fire at the museum, I've gotten to fire over the Cumbres and Toltec, including the big hill out of Chama where you put a bazillion thousand scoops of coal in the locomotive going up and over the tallest railroad pass left in the United States. So I have a little bit of a pedigree of flinging coal, but you know, I didn't honestly really know how much coal these engines use. Everyone seems to ask, well, how far can you go on the tender that you have behind you? And the water always runs out first, and I always say, well, it depends on how hard the engine's working. But I've never gotten a true number or fact about that, so I decided to do a little research and a little math. Last year, during the Polar Express train ride at the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado, we had two different locomotives pull the train in different parts of the year. The Denver and Rio Grande Western number 491 and the Rio Grande Southern number 20. They're two very different locomotives, as you can see. 20 is quite small. It's designed more to be a passenger engine, faster mixed use type thing versus 491, which is just chunk, big choo-choo for the narrow gauge at least, designed to haul lots and lots of freight and kind of slog it out at a slow pace. 491 all put together weighs 307,250 pounds if it was wet and fully loaded with water, coal, and everything. 20 is more about 135,000 pounds. So 20 is, you know, a little over a third the weight of 491. So how do they compare when they pull the same train? This has been an interesting question and one that myself and my coworkers at the museum have argued about a little bit too. 20 is a smaller engine, but that means that it has to work a lot harder to pull the same train as 491. 491's got a lot more power, double the power basically of the 20. So it's working a lot less hard to pull the same weight up a hill. Our railroad at the museum is laid on the side of a hill and it, though it's only a half mile long, it goes up a 3.5% grade and down a 4% grade, and that's pretty steep in terms of railroading. So that means the engines work pretty hard up the hill, and, and for this Polar Express train ride, we ran with five coaches, which is not tonnage, the maximum amount 20 can pull, but it was getting really close. Close enough that you needed a really good fireman and a really good engineer to get over the road, because every little bit counted at that point. So 20 is working its butt off to pull these five cars, and. 491 doesn't really care. Doesn't really even notice that they're back there because the five cars total doesn't even add up to 491's weight. The weight of all the cars is about 200,000 pounds. Each one is about 40,000 pounds a piece. It changes a little bit depending on each car and the length and, and other factors that go in there, but figure about 200,000 pounds for the train. So all said and done, 491, including itself, is pulling about 500,000 pounds and 20 is pulling about 330,000 pounds. So two thirds the weight of what 491 is. So does the more powerful engine working less, but having to pull more because its own weight is there, does it use more coal than the 20, which is working way harder and the fire is burning so much brighter? Well, let's get into it. So I analyzed footage that I have from Polar Express from last year set of six laps around the museum. So we go three miles, very exciting. How much coal are we burning in three miles? One and a half of which is uphill. I counted the scoops and each engine with each fireman used 30 scoops of coal. Exactly 30, both of them, it was kind of funny. But the nuance comes from 20 having a much smaller shovel than 491. 20's shovel's a number two because it's a small firebox. And 491's is a big shovel, a number four. So you put more coal in with that shovel than you do the 20 shovel. So the, the number of scoops is the same, 491 used more coal. So it's not a perfect scientific test because we didn't have the same crew. And ever since we got these results, Jeff, Dusty and I were like, oh, well now we need to do this again, but with the same crew and the same thing and try and be as scientific as we can about it. So it's a ballpark answer, 
But we got the answer of just how much coal did they burn for three miles on our little railroad. 491, based on 30 scoops and the average scoop in that number four scoop, I actually went in and weighed myself holding the scoop full of coal several times over to get an average and they were all pretty close. That scoop holds 13 pounds of coal. 13.1 if you're gonna be precise. And 20's little scoop holds 6.2 pounds. So it's less than half the amount of coal. So very different. So 491 burned 393 pounds of coal. 20 burned 186 pounds of coal. This means that with that train on that railroad, we're using about 130 pounds of coal per mile with 491 and we're using 62 pounds of coal per mile with 20. The interesting thing to me though was, okay, so 491 used more coal, but it is heavier. So which engine's more efficient? Well, it turns out it's actually 20, not 491. 491 needed to burn basically 7.7% of the train's weight in coal. And 20 needed to use 5.5. So it's a couple percentage points more efficient to use the smaller engine for that train, which reinforces an age old railroad thing that a lot of people tend to forget about. We look at the big impressive machines and, and think that's what you always would want on a railroad, but you really had to right size your locomotive for the job back in the day. You had a roundhouse because you could pick that locomotive with those wheels, that, that, that many wheels, that size of pistons, it's able to do the work that we need to for that job. We need that locomotive versus today where it's just stack another diesel on. The other interesting thing is size of firebox comparison. 20's firebox is itty bitty compared to 491's. We're talking 52 square feet on 491 side and like 13 square feet for 20's side. Now what would be interesting would be to compare the efficiencies when the locomotives are pulling harder and for longer. 20 is a saturated steam engine, and that means that you get steam from the top of the boiler up in the dome, runs through the throttle valve, goes down to the engine, that's it. 491 is a superheated engine, which means that that steam is taken from the same place up in the dome, goes up to the smoke box where it's divided into a bunch of little pipes that run down the exhaust gas flues a couple times, come back up, and then recollect before going to the engine. And that means that when 491's working hard and is drawing a lot of hot gas through the flues, it takes that steam and superheats it. At 200 PSI, steam's about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then that steam, when superheated, gets up to the 750 degrees Fahrenheit range at the same pressure. So it expands a lot more and you're using the water much more efficiently. So the engine has to make less steam to do the same amount of work because of that. But with the nature of our railroad and how small of a train we were pulling, she never gets hot enough to superheat. We've zapped the branch pipes to see just how hot that steam is with our thermometer. And it never gets above 400 degrees, basically. It never gets anywhere near superheat temps. So the engine is basically just acting like a big saturated steam engine with a lot of extra pipe in the middle. We don't work it hard enough or long enough to actually start the superheating at the museum which means that 491's not running as optimally as it could if we're talking about pure fuel use efficiency. So maybe if 491 had a big slog it out tonnage train behind it, it might be exactly as efficient as the 20, but in the operations case that we have, it isn't. Okay guys, so this was just a whole bunch of nerdy stuff, a lot of little details about coal and how many scoops and whatever. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you liked a little dive into the nerdy side of things and doing a little steam train math. Uh, doesn't really serve much purpose because they're definitely not out there needing to save fuel in tourist service and as, at a museum, we're talking about interpreting the artifacts. But it's definitely neat to see that, oh my goodness, the big engine, yeah, it weighs three times as much basically, but it only burns double the coal for the same train. <laughs> so that's your takeaway. How much coal does a steam engine burn per mile? Does depend on how hard it's working and all that sort of thing. But here at the Colorado Railroad Museum, maybe 130 pounds per mile on 491 and about 60 pounds per mile on 20. Which means that with 491, if we were to just continuously go and we had a full tender to start with, we could go for almost 153 miles at the museum, which is like 306 laps or whatever. Yeah, yeah, 
300 laps to the museum. That would be, that would be a day. That would be literally all day, 153 miles. <laughs> and then 20 could do 193 miles with its tender. That would be, uh, that would get old. Seeing the same scenery 300 plus times, 400 times in, in case of 20. Railroad till you puke, baby. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this nerdy little deep dive on some coal usage things and watching the locomotives and seeing what they do and, and understanding what it means to be the guy that has to shovel the coal. Thanks so much for watching.